Hello again, book lovers. Yes, like the villain in a 50s B-movie with an evil laugh, a twirl of the moustache and another random page from a random book. I am back once again. Please try to contain the excitement. Well, how are you all doing? It's been a couple of weeks again and I'm, I'm slipping and I am sorry. Not that many of you, I imagine, care. Anyway, today's random book is a treat. It is The Painter by the splendid, marvellous and frankly wonderful Deirdre Query. We're going to talk a little bit about that book in a moment. Um, but first, a little bit about Deirdre. Well, well like quite a, a number of people um, who I've done uh, reviews for so far uh, in this series, I've never actually met Deirdre face to face. Um, I think Deirdre lives in, in Spain, in, in Mallorca, actually. Um, so we've never been able to, you know, our paths have never been able to cross in person. But she's someone who, again, right through my own journey uh, as a writer, has been very, um, very supportive and. and um, her, her friendly words and um, sage advice sometimes um, are very, very much appreciated. So again, it is a, a privilege and a joy to be able to do a little bit of a review for her. Deirdre is someone um, who um, writes some of the most unique books I think I've ever experienced. Um, her first book came, came out roughly, I think, around about the same time that mine did. Uh, my first book did it back in 2015 it was called Eden's Burning um, and it was an extraordinarily um, emotional and one imagines um, you know, personally um, I I emotive um, the stories I think I, I think I've read it it was it was a tale of the troubles in Belfast in the 70s um, it was a, a, essentially a cast of characters who were at conflicts with each other whilst caring deeply for each other and it was um you know for, for someone who didn't directly experience those, those 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 events um it was emotional enough for me i can only imagine what it was must have been like to write it um that book was followed up by the secret wound and the painter which we're going to read from today is her third book now the painter itself um this is it um the um, recommendation on the front by Rose McGinty, who's another great author. Um, sinister, mysterious, redemptive, this modern day folklore will haunt you. And as I said, I suppose if you had to categorise it, you'd call it a psychological thriller. Um, but it's, again, as with a lot of books, it's doing a disservice, a disservice in my view to simply label it as, as that. Uh, I think Deirdre yourself considers it modern day folklore, as the verb, uh, as the blurb suggests. And there are many elements. Uh, within it that you would struggle to nail down to one particular genre um, and it's a game as all with all Deirdre's works a very emotive read um, essentially what we're looking at here is um, a first person journey by a particularly unpleasant individual so we have um, a chap called uh, Augustine um, I, I, I think yeah um, I, I'm never sure how to pronounce <laughs> people's name whether it's Augustine or Augustine or I'm going to call it Augustine um, and we read the story from entirely from his point of view um, which isn't uncommon in first person narrative as you would expect but what that does is initially deposits the reader pretty much straight away in an, in an environment where frankly it isn't very pleasant he's, he's, an, he's, he's an unpleasant man he's a, quite a dangerous man um, in um, in many respects and we are invited to essentially share his journey um, and one of Deirdre's skills is that we eventually start sympathising with him. We see things from his point of view, twisted though it may be, and in a, he ends up as almost as a perverse anti-hero uh, and we actually start as readers almost rooting for him, which makes us feel a little bit uncomfortable at times. So it, it's um, it's really quite, the, um, quite a deftly written um, book to to evoke the, the, these these conflicting um, these conflicting senses. What I also like about it, as again as I mentioned with other books, is I'm I'm a big fan of when um, the surroundings, the character surroundings, um, don't just aren't just a backdrop to the story, but they are an essential part of the, of the person's growth or integral to the story itself. Um, um, I, in my blind flailing way, tried to do that when I was writing my uh, Prague thrillers series um we've, we've, we've uh, talked about other, other books as well where um, the, the the city or the country or wherever is, is is almost a character in the book and it's the same here it's set in uh, Mallorca where as i said where deirdre lives um and it's very much of um of that environment and the 
um, the reality, the beauty of Mallorca um, is juxtaposed very finely with the, um, I suppose, chaotic and almost uh, ugliness of the protagonist's psyche, um, which, again, simply makes it uh, for a very, very interesting and enjoyable read. So I'm going to leave it there before we get onto it, our, our random page. And I really do encourage you to seek out Deirdre. She is a wonderful, lovely, um, responsive person. I think if you find her, um, her, her website, if you drop her, uh, drop her a line, she's, I'm sure she'll get back in touch with you and, and, and be delighted to chat about her work. Um, so a bit about the, the book itself then. The Painter. It's the art that kills us, which is a quote from Pablo Picasso. And you, you'll find when you read the story, I think all of the chapters um, are headed with a, with a, with a quote uh, from, from Picasso. In a desire to impress the people who visit his studio, renowned artist the painter employs a gardener to create an inspirational landscape which includes a labyrinth, an orange grove and Moorish inspired fountains. They develop an intimate relationship and the painter, whose life and talent have become increasingly dis <coughs> excuse me, dissipated, finds himself slowly recovering his original talent. However, the relationship is tainted by the painter's jealousy when visitors express more interest in a magical garden and mysterious labyrinth than in his art. That jealousy then blossoms into de deadly rage when the painter catches the gardener altering one of his paintings. Deirdre Query's compelling new thriller expo explores themes of love, life and deceit and examines the lengths we will go to to pursue and protect our passions. Very interesting background to the story and I think, as you can probably tell by the amount of words I've already tripped over, I'm going to put my glasses on. What do you think of it so far? Rubbish! No, that's me, by the way, not the book, which is fantastic. Random page. You know what? Let's go a bit further today. Okay then, we are going to read page 214 of The Painter. Apologies in advance for all of the words I will stumble upon. You are not like Ishmael. He loved to look at my paintings. Even though I was only seven, he encouraged me. It felt good to be around him. I learned from him. I haven't learned anything from you other than remembering not to be angry with my mother. Do you want to have a look or not? It's up to you. I slid onto the edge of the bed and bent down, pretending to tie my bootlaces in an attempt to regain composure. Without looking up, I whispered, Of course I would like to see it. Are you pleased with it? One year spoke confidently back. An artist can never comment on his own work. It speaks for itself. I heard his tiny feet press softly onto the wood tile bedroom floor, as if he were wearing thick socks. I thumped on the floor behind him. He ran across the pebbled path. I wondered whether he was attempting to escape from me, or whether he wanted to show me how much older I was and how much less fit. I took a few deep breaths to prepare me for what I would see in the studio. Inside, Anya removed the cover from his canvas. The cover was a piece of plastic which I had retrieved earlier from the garden. I didn't want to give him Egyptian cotton or silk with which I covered my paintings. That would have given him the idea that he was a painter like Vermeer, that he was someone who deserved to be noticed, masterly in his treatment of light. In thinking of Vermeer, I shuddered at my own hypocrisy. There we go, a little bit of an insight into the mind of the protagonist, the um, alleged, essentially nameless painter, but as I said, Augustine, um, I think we uh, decipher his name uh, to be from, from the text. I hope you enjoyed that. Um, I, as I said, I really do feel this is one of the most unique stories I think I've, I've, ever, I've ever read and ever experienced. It, it's a real treat, and I encourage you to read this one and go out and, uh, and speak to Deirdre. Well, there we are. Um, it's been a few weeks, I apologise. I hope you'll find this one interesting and go out and uh, enjoy a new author's work today. Um, find it online if the libraries are open around you, then uh, borrow, etc. Um, and enjoy it. And just keep reading, folks. Um, that's, that's really one of the few things we can we can guiltlessly do at the moment. Um, and I encourage you to do so. So, look after yourselves. I will endeavour to be back presently with more random pages, random books. Um, and hopefully smoother delivery. Have a good day. Take care.